1692, George Burroughs was convicted of witchcraft and hanged. The evidence? Marks found on three girls, thought to be bite marks, that were said to have, quote, matched his teeth. Except for a few cases, bite marks didn't come into the mainstream until the 1970s with the Walter Marks case. It was the first reported case in the modern era to allow the comparison of bite marks on human flesh to a suspect's teeth. Then in 1979, the popularity of the discipline exploded when it was used to convict infamous killer Ted Bundy. The conviction likely rested more on the overwhelming amount of evidence implicating Bundy than the bite mark evidence alone. Nevertheless, bite marks continued to gain general acceptance. But bite mark matching is unreliable. Expert testimony about bites should not be sufficient to support convictions. Alarmingly, the central principle on which bite mark matching is based, the idea that every person's teeth are arranged in a unique way, has never been shown to be true. It's unvalidated. What's worse is that bite marks in criminal cases are usually found on skin, yet scientific studies and government research consistently show that human skin is a terrible substrate for capturing information. Skin swells, it tears, it decomposes, and the way a bite mark looks on skin can change radically over time. And there's not reliable science that establishes that examiners can differentiate between human bites and other marks on bodies, like marks from scavenging animals, insect activity, and other types of damage. Why does the use of bite mark matching evidence persist? There are several possible explanations. One reason is that the law uses precedent, the practice of relying upon the decisions of other courts, which means that courts may admit bite mark evidence because they know other courts have done so without a clear understanding of problems with the reliability of the science surrounding the evidence. Because our legal system values finality, convictions can be difficult to overturn. Once a person is convicted based on bite mark matching or any other unreliable scientific evidence, courts can be reluctant to reconsider that person's case because of the role of trial judges in determining what evidence is admissible. Even when a court decides that an individual's conviction is wrongful, that might not keep the type of evidence used to secure their conviction from being admitted in future cases. That means, incredibly, that in some states, the precedent allowing bite mark evidence is based on cases where courts have reversed the conviction. Another reason may be that bite mark matching can be confused with a historically reliable discipline, the identification of remains using dental records, the latter is generally reliable, the former is not. Unfortunately, lumping the two together casts inappropriate legitimacy on bite mark analysis. What's more, experts who challenge existing disciplines, including bite mark matching, are often the subject of personal and professional attacks. Reporting by the Washington Post details several such attacks on scientists who've criticized the use of bite mark evidence, like Dr. Mary Bush and Dr. Michael Bowers. This can discourage experts who question the use of unreliable evidence from testifying, especially when they're standing up for criminal defendants. The Innocence Project has recorded at least 31 wrongful convictions and indictments based on bite mark matching. Robert Stinson was convicted of rape and murder in 1985. The only physical evidence presented against him at trial was the testimony of two bite mark examiners who said the bite marks on the decedent's body had to have been made by teeth identical to Mr. Stinson's with no margin for error, and that the bite mark evidence was high quality and overwhelming. Both experts said Mr. Stinson was the only person who could have created the wounds. In 2005, DNA testing excluded Mr. Stinson as the source of the injuries. He was exonerated in 2009, and the real perpetrator was eventually found. But while Mr. Stinson sat in prison, the real killer Moses Price Jr. was free to commit other crimes, including robbery, sexual assault, and homicide. This fact that Mr. Stinson's conviction was reversed because the bite mark analysis in his case was unreliable is an example judges in future prosecutions should be made aware of when they're considering whether to admit this type of evidence. Scientific evidence should only be admitted when it is reliable. Bite mark evidence is not. Mr. Stinson's story is not unique. In 1994, 
Gary Sifazari was wrongfully convicted of murdering his aunt in Worcester County, Massachusetts, based on bite mark evidence. He spent 35 years in prison before a collaborative effort that included the Center for Integrity and Forensic Sciences worked to free him in 2019. The case against Mr. Sifazari was based solely on bite marks on the victim's body. Two odontologists for the prosecution stated that the impressions on the victim and the impressions made by Mr. Sifazari's teeth were a match. DNA testing was eventually done on the evidence in 2019, and no DNA from the scene matched Mr. Sifazari. The DNA was then run through the FBI CODIS system, and the profile matched Michael Giraud, a person who also continued to commit crimes and was in and out of prison after the murder Mr. Sifazari was wrongfully convicted of. Shortly after this discovery, Mr. Sifazari was exonerated in 2019. The real perpetrator, Michael Giraud, died in 2014. Wrongful conviction experts have identified 31 wrongful convictions and indictments based on bite mark testimony. That only reflects the wrongful accusations and convictions we know about. Wrongful conviction experts are confident that many more people remain incarcerated based on flawed forensic science. This is because innocence organizations lack the resources and capacity to thoroughly investigate and take on every case they evaluate, and they don't hear about every single case. In addition, because of how difficult it is to obtain reversals and how many reversals are denied on procedural rather than substantive grounds, we can be confident that not all people incarcerated based on this type of evidence get the reconsideration the situation merits. Bite mark evidence is unreliable and should not be used in courts. One approach is adopting laws like Texas's Changed Science Statute, which creates a procedure for rehearing cases where people were convicted based on bite mark evidence. Defense lawyers, prosecutors, and judges all need to understand the limitations of forensic science. In particular, the criminal justice system should stop using bite mark evidence and people who have been convicted on the basis of this unreliable evidence should have a vehicle for reconsideration of their convictions. Prosecutors should not use bite mark matching evidence. When considering challenges to expert testimony about bite marks, courts should carefully review the compelling evidence that bite mark matching is scientifically unreliable. A body of case law that rejects the admissibility of this evidence will discourage prosecutors from basing future cases on it and encourage judges to rule that it is inadmissible. The Center for Integrity and Forensic Sciences is fighting to keep bite mark evidence and all types of bad forensic evidence out of courtrooms. Visit us at cifsjustice.org.